Hey everybody, my name is Alex Ritzkoven and this is a quick screencast talking about the revealing module pattern and how you could use it to clean up the JavaScript code in your HTML pages. Uh, still from time to time I see, working as a consultant, folks who put their JavaScript code into the HTML page. Uh, and I think that the web itself and we as developers, I think you know, we should move beyond that. Same as we have removed styles from our page, and we no longer include styles in our page, uh, we use classicating style sheets and include them. We should do the same with our with our JavaScript. Let's keep it out of the HTML file. So let's take a look at how we can do that using the revealing module pattern. So if we take a look at our test page here, we can see that it's just a simple HTML page, nothing special going on. Inside my body, I just have a paragraph tag and I have a button. That's all. Down below, I have my script, so I include jQuery here, and then I have a custom script tag of my own, or I'm doing my own script. So you can see I'm using the document ready function that jQuery exposes, and I'm adding a click event to my button up above here, where I'm just setting the HTML of that paragraph up above to be the current year. Not very exciting, but for demonstration purposes, it will do just fine. I'm also calling the, the log message function here, which we have defined down below. And we can see that all this guy does is write to the console, I'm from log message in the page. Fantastic. So if we run this, control F5, or where is my, this breakpoint. Let me refresh this page. Let's go to the console. So I have my dev tools open here in Chrome. You can open these by pressing F12. Open, close, open, close. Um, and I hit my button. Click. We get the 2013 up above in our paragraph tag. And I'm from log message in the page. Wow. Exciting stuff. <laughs> uh, so as you can see, our console log message is working just fine. And people may look at this and say, well, that, that looks great. It all works fine. It uh, does what we would expect it to do. What, what seems to be the problem? Well, if we think about this and we look at this log message function, that's a pretty generic name, maybe a common name. Uh, suppose a new super fantastic JavaScript library comes out and we're like, it's all the rage. This JavaScript library has the best log message function in it ever and everybody's making use of it. So we decide, you know what, we want to take advantage of that as well. And the name of that project is called test.html.js. <laughs> and here it is here. Not, perhaps not the best name for a project, um, but that's what it is, test.html.js. And inside that, um, inside that new project, inside that new JS file, we have a log message function. This is way better than ours. This one says, I'm from the external JS file. So we say, you know what, I want to be on the cutting edge. I want my stuff to be right in there on the bleeding edge of technology. I'm going to use this new JavaScript file. I'm going to take advantage of it. So I include it in my page. There we go, super. So I save, I go back to my browser, I refresh, and I click. And I get 2013 again, great. And I hit, I'm from the external JS file. Hmm. The log message function in my page said, I'm from log message in the page. But the external file said, I'm from the external JS file. So what we have here is an issue where we've added this script after we defined our log message. This, the function has the same name and the one from test.html.js is squashing our log message. Now, it could be that <laughs> that's the behavior you're looking for, and you might say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, the issue is, is that we have these two log message functions, and they've both been added to the global window object. So when one is defined after the other, it's stepping on the other one. In fact, if we go over here, and we go to our sources tab, and you can see here's our script in the page. If I just set a breakpoint here and hit click me again, we can see over here in the scope variables, we have the local scope, but we also have the global scope, which is defined here as window. So if I expand this guy, scroll down, L-M-N-O-L, here it is, log message. And we hover.
hover over that, you can see here I'm from the external JS file. So we indeed have the log message function here on the global scope, which is bad, because I guess as we're already seeing, we're seeing behavior that may be difficult to debug later on if it wasn't such a simple scenario that we've outlined here. So let's go ahead and clear that breakpoint and let that run through. Okay, so now that we can see that we have a problem, that we're polluting the global scope, which we know we shouldn't do because it's bad, and we want to sleep well at night, not worrying about the fact that we are polluting the global scope, how do we go about fixing this? Well, let's go back over to our test.html.js and let's fix this up. So let's say var, we're going to call this guy logger. And we'll set it equal to a function that takes no parameters. Right? And one of the things that we want to do is when this loads into the page, we want it to execute immediately. So I'm going to put these two parentheses here. And that's going to make it invoke this as soon as it loads into the page. And they call this and immediately invoked FUNC function expression, all right? Or for short, it's iffy. I've seen it called that, and people also call it a self. Excuse my typing. Self executing function. So those are the two names that I've seen this thing be called. So now within our Within our ify, we need to define the functionality that we want. Well, we know that when that page loads, over here we did it in document.ready, we know when that page loads that we set up this click handler, and within that click handler we were just calling log message. So we'd like to emulate that functionality over here. So how can we do that? Well, let's see, we'll say var init, because we're going to call this essentially to initialize everything when the page loads, and we're going to set this equal to a function not going to take any parameters. Uh, and we're also going to have a log message. I'm going to set that equal to a function. That guy's not going to take any parameters. Okay. And then come down here and we're just going to return an object literal. Let me just clean this up. There we go. So we have init, where we want to do our setup, we have our log message function, and we have our return statement. So the return statement is where we want to define the API that's going to be accessible externally. So we know that from the page to set up our click handler, we're going to need to be able to call init. So we want to expose that. So we do it just like that. Essentially what this means is externally people will call init, and internally it will call init. I could have called this anything. I could have called this uh, super function, whatever I wanted to call it. You call it anything, but I'm just going to call it init. Okay, come down here. We'll get rid of this guy. Well, actually, let's just copy this console log because we'll use it. Come up here into log message, paste that in there. So we'll have it log out a new message. I'm using the revealing module pattern. And now, within init, we'd like to do what we were doing over here. So let's get our click handler. We'll cut this guy out of here. Paste him over here. And there we go. So you can see our code really hasn't changed much. We've just moved it out of our page to make it uh, accessible via this logger function. So within init, we still set up our click handler, we still do the date, we still call log message. Now what's interesting is that log message is accessible to me here, right, within the init function, because I have it defined inside of the uh, function here, the logger function. But I'm not exposing it here, so it's not available externally, which is kind of cool if you want to have uh, stuff that's private that you don't want to expose. So let's go ahead and save this guy. We'll go back over here. We're still going to use our document ready function, but we no longer need this guy. All right, we 
still need this. We still need to include this because that's now where our logger code lives here in test.html.js. And then within our document ready function, all we need to do is call logger, which you can see pops up here now in IntelliSense. Dot, and you can see in it because it's exposed. Now, like I said before, logger dot. If we look for the log message function, it isn't there. But say we did later on. Oh, you know what? I wanted to expose that. We could just go here and expose it, save, and go back. And I can say logger dot, and there it is, log message. For this demo here, we're gonna leave it so it's not exposed, and we'll just have our init function. So if we take a look, we've gotten all of the code minus this init function here out of our HTML page. Uh, we're no longer polluting the global space with our log message function because we have it wrapped up inside this logger function, so we're no longer polluting the space. So if we did have another library that used the log message function or had another script that used it, it wouldn't squash on this guy because this guy lives inside logger. right? So if we go ahead and run this guy, let's go back, we'll go to our console, we'll click, you can see we get our 2013 and we get, I'm using the revealing module pattern, which is this guy right here. So behavior is the same, we're still getting our desired functionality, but we certainly have uh, cleaned up our code and, I think, reduced our chances of making mistakes in the future and having bugs that are hard to run, run down because of scoping issues and polluting the global space. So this has been a little introduction to the revealing module pattern. I hope you find it useful uh, and can use it to refactor some code that you may find out in the wild that still has JavaScript stuck in the page. Email me with any questions or comments and look for more screencasts to come in the future. Thanks for watching.